the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pierce coming to you from Baltimore. The issue of climate change, perhaps the greatest threat facing us, has gotten very little attention during this year's presidential race. However, the two major party candidates have provided us some clues as to where they stand on the issue. Donald Trump, for example, has denied that climate change is a problem and has instead said that if he's elected, he would increase investments in fossil fuels. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, has promised to generate millions of clean energy jobs over 10 years if she is elected. But what would it take to generate millions of jobs? And what can we do about the jobs jobs that will be lost in the fossil fuel sector? Joining us now to discuss this is Heidi Garrett Peltier. Heidi recently published an article on this topic on the website the Conversation. Heidi is an assistant research professor at the Political Economy Research Institute of the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Heidi, so good to have you with us. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Heidi, one of the reasons that the transition to clean energy is so controversial is that people working and families that rely on these um, jobs and the communities that rely on it all think uh, that they are up against these clean new jobs and that they will lose their jobs in the fossil fuel sector. So give us a brief summary as to why you believe this transition, transition does not really have to be about uh, losing jobs but creating jobs. Sure. Well, that, that's a, a really important point because, um, you know, at a macro level, when we look at the economy as a whole, the transition to clean energy creates many more jobs um, in renewable energy industries, in energy efficiency industries, and in all of the, the supply chain that goes into those industries. Um, so many more jobs are created than the number of jobs that are lost in fossil fuels. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't uh, potential hardships for the, for the people and the communities that are dependent on, on fossil fuel employment. Um, and so uh, one of the things that we're actually working on here at the Research Institute at Perry is um, the, the concept of a just transition. Uh, so what does it mean for people and communities who are dependent on fossil fuels for their living and for their, uh, their livelihoods? And uh, for some, it means uh, retraining and having enough funding from the federal government to provide retraining, especially for people who are earlier in their careers. For people who are later in their careers and, and closer to retirement age, it might mean an earlier retirement. Um, but there, there are implications for specific individuals and communities. Um, and uh, but, but the other thing to keep in mind is that clean energy jobs can be created in many different communities. So there are specific renewable energies that need to be in places where there is more sunlight or more wind. Um, but if we think about something like weatherizing homes or making um, commercial buildings more energy efficient, those kinds of installation construction jobs and the, the manufacturing jobs creating those energy efficient technologies and renewable energy technologies, those can be situated anywhere. So if we are thinking of this really um, holistically in, in terms of uh, where the clean energy industry as a whole is going, and we think specifically about the impacts on communities that stand to lose jobs, we can try to situate some of these manufacturing plants um, in those communities and, um, and also the, the weatherization and energy efficiency sort of work will happen uh, economy-wide in all communities since there are, are buildings everywhere that are inefficient. Um, Right. So that offsets some of the, the, the uh, job loss. Uh, Heidi, why are jobs in the clean energy sector cheaper to create? Um, well, the, they, the, there are a few different things. Um, so one, they're, they're a little bit cheaper to create because the pay on average is lower in clean energy than it is in fossil fuels. Um, that being said, the, if we look at the jobs created um, for uh, lower credentialed and a little bit lower pay, um, the sort of middle income, college educated jobs and the, the upper income jobs, there are more jobs created at every level in clean energy industries than in fossil fuel industries for the given, a given amount of spending. Um, so even though the average pay is lower, 
um, the the number of jobs at each level of pay is actually greater in fossil in uh, excuse me in clean energy. Um, but there there are a few reasons, not just the the difference in pay. There are a few reasons that clean energy jobs um, that that there are more of them created for each million dollars or each billion dollars of spending. Um, and a couple of those other reasons. One is domestic content. So the um, the portion of the industry that is uh, domestically based, so the, the inputs, the, the goods and services that, that make up the supply chain of energy efficiency and renewable energy industries, more of that is located within the domestic economy. So that creates more jobs within the US as opposed to something like importing oil, where we might have refinery jobs here and some oil extraction jobs here, but we're also um, leaking a lot of our spending out of the country for, for imported goods. Um, Right. So let's take a look at how much uh, the U.S. government would need to invest in clean energy in order to create millions of jobs that Hillary Clinton is proposing. And are these jobs above and beyond the ones that are lost uh, in the fossil fuel industry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, two years ago, we published a study called Green Growth um, that is U.S. based. And then uh, last year, we published another one that, that looks at a few other countries as well. Um, but when we looked at the U.S. green growth, uh, what we would have to do in order to bring down carbon emissions by 40 percent over 20 years, which is the, the uh, recommendation by climate scientists, um, we estimated that 1.2% of GDP would need to be spent on uh, this transition to clean energy. And, uh, you know, even though that's certainly not an insignificant amount of spending, it is very achievable, very affordable, um, very feasible. And so 1.2% uh, of GDP would create uh, nearly 4 million jobs in clean energy. And if we assume that for every dollar we put in clean energy, we take a dollar away from fossil fuels, which is not the case, but that, that's sort of worst case scenario. If we assume that that was true, then we would lose not quite a million jobs in fossil fuels. So we would still economy wide come out ahead by 3 million jobs. Um, so 1.2% of GDP, um, it's actually 2.7 million jobs would be created right. in this for a 20 year program. Right. Um, also, uh, Heidi, one of the frequent criticisms of government intervention in job creation um, is that the so-called Solyndra problem, which you address in your article, that is Solyndra is the solar cell producer that had received half a billion dollars in federal loans and, and then it went bankrupt. So Trump and others uh, point to this as a waste of money. Uh, what is your response? Was it a waste? Absolutely not. And it is really amazing how much press the failure of Solyndra got and how little press all of the successes of the loan guarantee program got. So Solyndra makes up a tiny portion of all the loan guarantees made by the Department of Energy. So in the stimulus package in 2009, there were billions of dollars set aside for the Department of Energy to make loan guarantees for things like renewable energy producers and uh, other, other types of clean energy industries. And so what we heard about was this one failure. And uh, if we look at all of the failures of the program, of the loan guarantee program, it adds up to only 2% of all of the loans made. And so meanwhile, the 98% of the loans made are successful and, the, and they're paying back interest. So when we think of the American taxpayer, as it turns out, already the American taxpayer is ahead because uh, the, the la latest stat that I got was from uh, 2014. By 2014, the losses from Solyndra and another company in, uh, in the loan guarantee program added up to less than $800 million. And the interest paid back from the successful loans was already more than $800 million. And by this point in time, even more interest payments have been made. So the program is already a success, is already making money for the American taxpayer. And meanwhile, we have only heard about this one case of failure. 
Huh, interesting uh, proposal altogether. Um, I thank you so much for joining us, Heidi, and I encourage people to go online and read the article that Heidi has written. Um, some very interesting options are weighed out here for us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.